Hello everyone, for this video we are going to discuss Article 155 of the Revised Penal Code which is the crime of alarms and scandals. Article 155, Alarms and Scandals The penalty of arresto minor or a fine not exceeding 40,000 pesos shall be imposed upon number 1. Any person who within any town or public place shall discharge any firearm rocket, firecracker, or other explosives calculated to cause alarm or danger. Number two, any person who shall instigate or take an active part in any charivari or other disorderly meeting offensive to another or prejudicial to public tranquility. Number three, any person who, while wandering about at night or while engaged in any other nocturnal amusements, shall disturb the public peace or number four any person who while intoxicated or otherwise shall cause any disturbance or scandal in public places provided that the circumstances of the case shall not make the provisions of article 153 applicable these are the punishable acts in article 155 first punishable act discharging any firearm, rocket, firecracker, or other explosive within any town or public place calculated to cause alarm or danger. Second punishable act, instigating or taking an active part in any charivari or other disorderly meeting offensive to another or prejudicial to public tranquility. Number three or third punishable act, disturbing the public peace while wandering about at night or while engaged in any other nocturnal amusements. And number four, causing any disturbance or scandal in public places while intoxicated or otherwise, provided Article 153 is not applicable. Let us discuss the first punishable act, which is, as I said, discharging any firearm, rocket, firecracker, or other explosive within any town or public place calculated to cause alarm or danger. Now, to come under Article 155, the offender who discharges such firearm must not aim it at another person. Because if he aims it at another person and discharges the firearm, Although he had no intent to kill, he will be liable instead for the crime of discharge of firearms under Article 254. If there was intent to kill, when he aimed it at another person and he discharged it, whether or not he hit that person, he will be liable for the crime of either frustrated or attempted parricide, murder, or homicide as the case may be. So, take note of these distinctions. Again, in order for the act of the offender to come under Article 155, meaning alarms and scandals only, the offender who discharges such firearm must not aim it towards another person. Because if he aims it towards another person, then he will be liable for another crime. And in the event that he discharges such firearm while aiming it at another person, he will either be liable for discharge of firearms under Article 254 if there was no intent to kill on his part, or he would be liable for frustrated or attempted parricide, murder or homicide, or murder or homicide as the case may be if there was intent to kill when he aimed and discharged the gun at another person. Example, first example, X found a caliber 38 revolver and discharged it at the town plaza without aiming it at anyone. The crime here is only alarm and scandal under paragraph 1 of article 155. So, saktong sakto no na yung ginawa niya, nag Paputok lang siya ng baril doon sa public plaza. Hindi niya in-name towards another person. Then yung crime niya is alarm and scandal lang. 
Example number two, suppose X discharged it inside his home or inside his yard. Meaning, nagpaputok siya sa loob ng bahay niya or nasa bahay siya nung nagpaputok siya tapos iname niya palabas. Pero hindi niya pa rin pinoint to another person. The crime is still alarm and scandal under paragraph 1 of Article 155. Now, bakit alarm and scandal pa rin? Hindi ba dapat nasa public place? The answer is no. It doesn't have to be discharged in a public place. Article 155 does not make any distinction as to the particular place in the town or municipality or city where the firearm is discharged. For as long as it produces alarm or danger to the public. Example number three. X and Y got into a heated verbal altercation after Y accidentally bumped X's car. Y then challenged X to a fight. To intimidate or frighten Y, was about to approach him, X pulled out a gun from his waist, aimed it at Y's leg, and discharged the same. As a result, Y sustained a gunshot wound in his leg. What crime is committed here? The crime is discharge of firearm under Article 254. Why? Because X aimed his gun at another person. But still, there was no intent to kill on his part because X merely aimed and fired his gun at a portion of Y's body which, if hit, and in the example, Y was hit, is not fatal, meaning it would not have caused the death of the person to whom the gun was aimed at. That is the distinction between alarm and scandal and Discharge of firearm under Article 254. Example number four. X fired a volley of shots using an M16 Armalite rifle at the wall of Y's house. The crime here is what? Only alarm and scandal under paragraph 1 of Article 155. Why? Because the same was merely intended to cause alarm in the place where the shots were fired. Yes, it is true that the firearm was aimed towards the wall. But the rule is, in order to constitute the crime of discharge of firearm under Article 254, it must be aimed towards another person. Aiming it at a wall is not the same as aiming it at another person. Example number five. X, wanting to avenge his brother's death, shot and seriously injured Y. What crime is committed here? The crime is frustrated or attempted homicide or murder as the case may be, since clearly there was intent to kill on the part of X. Now, the phrase in paragraph 1, I am referring to the phrase calculated to cause alarm or danger, should be interpreted to mean which produces alarm or danger. Why? Because it is the result, not the intent that counts. The act itself, meaning to say the act of discharging the firearm, rocket, or any other firecracker or explosive, must produce alarm or danger as a consequence. Let's go to the second punishable act. Instigating or taking an active part in any charivari or other disorderly meeting offensive to another or prejudicial to public tranquility. What do we mean by the term sharivari? Sharivari is a medley of discordant voices or a mock serenade where the offender disturbs the peace by using cans, fans, utensils, or etc. 
the purpose here of the offender in using cans, pans, or utensils to create a discordant voice or an annoying sound is to annoy or insult and thereby disturb the public peace. For example, X and his friends, offended by the demand of some neighbors that they turn off the video key machine as it was already 10 o'clock in the evening, banged the pans and utensils against each other to annoy and disturb the peace in the neighborhood. Third punishable act. Disturbing the public peace while wandering about at night or while engaged in any other nocturnal amusements. Example number one. X, frustrated after his girlfriend left him for someone else, went out of his apartment at 2 o'clock in the morning and wandered aimlessly in the neighboring barangay, crying incessantly and shouting the name of his girlfriend, disturbing the people in the said barangay. This is an example of disturbing the public peace while wandering about at night. Another example, X and his friends refused to turn off or at least minimize the loud sound emanating from the video key machine they were using, even as it was already 11 o'clock in the evening, causing some neighbors to lose some sleep because of the noise. This is an example of disturbing the public peace while engaged in a nocturnal amusement. Fourth and last punishable act in Article 155, causing any disturbance or scandal in public places while intoxicated or otherwise, provided Article 153 is not applicable. This is an all-encompassing provision because of the use of the phrase any disturbance or scandal in public places. Hence, any disturbance or scandal in a public place not falling within paragraphs 1 to 3 of Article 155 and also of Article 153 of the Revised Penal Code is covered under this paragraph. For example, X for no apparent reason went out of his house and challenged his neighbors to a fight. This is an example, as I said, of a disturbance in a public place which does not fall within any of the first to the third paragraph of Article 155 and more so under Article 153, because Article 153 talks about a serious disturbance, and this is not a serious disturbance, but only a slight disturbance. Also, take note that in order to come under Article 153, I am referring to the crime of serious disturbance, the disturbance must be serious, otherwise the crime will only be alarms and scandals under Article 155. Now, to be considered serious, it must be planned or intended, meaning to say the offender must have intended to cause such disturbance and not just a spur-of-the-moment kind of disturbance like the example above. 